All right, man, we back. Mercy Sports Talk in the building. And when is it time to move on from Matthew Stafford from the Detroit for the Detroit Lions organization? And when should I think they when should I think they move on from Matthew Stafford? But we back. Mercy Sports Talk in the building. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And um, you know, it's been eleven years, and all of it is not Matthew Stafford's fault. Um, of failures of a Detroit Lions organization. We forget uh, that he came in and had to rebuild an on 16 franchise uh, with Matthew Stafford. And for Stafford's sake, um, it's, been a, it's been a tough ride, you know. When they had top five defense, the offensive local coordinator didn't know how to make it work. They could never run the ball. They had one yard. One year they ran the ball good with Joyce Bill, Reggie Bush. And that wasn't even good for the entire season. They got the fumbling towards the end of the season. All right. Um, you know, some people say run Stafford out now. Um, but once again, his contract is really, really Detroit Lions friendly. Now you're seeing quarterbacks sign for $100 million guaranteed. I think uh, Golf got $110 million guaranteed. And for everybody that got paid, <laughs> This summer, for the most part, except for Michael Thomas, I could think of they got really big money. Um, everybody's filled to meet expectations. Michael Thomas has met expectations. He's exceeded them after getting his money. Le'Veon Bell, he's failing. But understandably so, Le'Veon Bell is in a situation where um, he was not wanted, and the team is just awful. Zeke Elliott, he ain't balled. Todd Gurley, he got paid last year. He ain't balling. He injured. Um... Carson Walker to and wins. Whatever you want to say. Not having D Jack, having hot hands, rain, hey, what was it hot hands Raymond from Little Giants at the little mem. Um, cause uh Nelson Aguilar can't can't catch. Um Alshon Jeffries wasn't out there uh this past Sunday, so um one blaming on that. Jared Goff, he's sneaking up to join as well. He got what 110 million guaranteed. So it's not really been a year of or the last two years of guys getting paid and really exceeding expectations. All right, and Matthew Stafford's contract is very, very friendly. Um, for Lions' advantage, with his contract being friendly, um, it's not the time to get rid of him. This is the perfect time where you take a quarterback, you learn behind Stafford, like Alex Smith and Patrick Mahomes more recently, Rodgers, Brett Favre. Um, that's the situation, and today they were saying that uh, – on 97 won the ticket, they were saying that, uh, that's where I get the idea from for the video, they were saying um, that he has the Tony Romo back injury that eventually ended Tony Romo's career in Matthew Stafford. Okay. So you do have options. You could trade him because his contract is friendly. I'm not sure how much dead money he'll leave behind, but it doesn't really matter how much dead money he leave behind. His team is nowhere near talent-wise close to competing. Okay, so it really doesn't matter how much dead money he got at this point to me. The cap has been cleaned up from the last capologist. They bought the Patriot guy in. But the one thing about bringing in a new quarterback, let's just say hypothetically, they do move Stafford, and they bring in a new quarterback. Then you have to commit to Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia. Well, at least Bob Quinn, you have to commit to him and say, you know what? He didn't get to bring his own quarterback in. He didn't get to bring his own head coach in. Okay, he got his head coach, right? And now, now he's getting his... Uh, quarterback in so I think he had three years left after the season's two years so it's two years enough to really gauge on how good a quarterback can be I say no you know so if he does ride out with Matthew Stafford um and things don't work around Matthew Stafford or with you know around and with Matthew Stafford then you get rid of him but then it's always an argument well I didn't get to bring in my own quarterback he on the way out with Martha will let me bring him on quarterback. If I would have brought him on quarterback, it would have been totally different. So then you always got that case. But with Matthew Stafford, the ideal situation is this, okay? And let's go through a few scenarios so we get to the ideal situation, okay? You can move Matthew Stafford in the offseason, acquire some assets, a pick or whatever, okay? Look at Chicago. Would you trade him in a division? I wouldn't, but, hey, Chicago need a quarterback. Carolina can be looking at a quarterback. Denver love, um, um, you know, picking up veteran quarterbacks with John Elway, one of the greatest quarterbacks I've seen. He can't evaluate a quarterback. Um, 
I mean, who else are you looking out there? The Redskins. I don't think Alex Smith coming back and Dwayne Haskins can sit behind Stafford and get better. They kind of more similar than than not. They can need a quarterback. The Dolphins could be looking for a quarterback. Uh, I know the Dolphins was interested in bringing them in, but Adam that Gates was down there. They could be looking for a quarterback. Um, to be honest, the Saints would have Drew Brees. You know, he won the Super Bowl. He decides to move on. He could be looking for a quarterback. Uh, Philip Rivers not looking good. He go out to L. A. Who won't want, want to go out to L. A. for a quarterback? Quite frankly, the Oakland Raiders could part with Derek Carr after the season. They could be looking for a quarterback. So it seems like the majority of the league could be looking for a quarterback. You know, you just go through the divisions. Tampa Bay could be looking for a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't think we trade them in the division, but you look at the, the South. You got Tampa. You got um, um, Carolina who's looking for a quarterback. New Orleans, if Drew Brees win this year, why not go out on top? Looking for a quarterback. Atlanta, I doubt it. Okay, you go to the NFC East. You know, they got Daniel Jones in New York. Washington, like I said, they use a quarterback to bridge in Dwayne Haskins. Catch Keenum out the guy, and I don't think Alex Smith will be returning. Um, who else? The Eagles, they got their quarterback. Dallas, they got their quarterback. Um, you know, in the, the South, you know, in the West, Arizona, they got their quarterback. You know, I like Kyler Murray. He's been balling this year. Um, Russell, Jimmy, you know what I'm saying, in golf. So you go to the AFC, who else do they got the quarterback? You know, Cleveland, you know, they I think they got their guy, Baker Mayfield. In uh, Cincinnati, can look for quarterback, but they not nowhere near close. Okay, you know, Baltimore, I mean, Steelers, they could be looking for a quarterback. I don't think Mason Rudolph's the answer. Ben Roethlisberger getting older, you know. Usually they like to go with the younger quarterbacks, though, but they had a few veterans in there over the course of the, the last couple of decades. But um, Baltimore, they got their quarterback. You go to Tennessee, hey, great fit for Matthew Stafford in Tennessee. Jacksonville, they got a couple quarterbacks. If Nick Foles don't mark, get Gardner Minshew, Minshaw. He balling down there. Houston got a quarterback. I think they believe in Jacoby Brissett in Indianapolis. Um, obviously, the AFC East, they all can use quarterbacks. The Bills, the Dolphins. Um, the Jets, I'm not sold on none of their young quarterbacks. Um, obviously, New England with Palm Brady walk away this year. I love Jordan Stenham, but, you know, the Patriot line connection right there. You go to the AFC East. I mean, AFC West, excuse me. Uh, the Raiders could use a quarterback if they're not married to Derek Carr. And Gruden loves better than quarterbacks. And I do think Matthew Stafford is better than Derek Carr. Um, Chiefs got one. The Chargers could be using one. They could need one after the way Phillip Rivers has been playing of late. And um, um, the Denver could use a quarterback. So, I mean, we evaluated just that quickly. Half the league can use a quarterback. Maybe over half the league can use a quarterback. So, there is a huge market for Matthew Stafford, especially with John Gruden in Oakland possibly moving to Vegas. For a, new, for a new season next year or was the next couple years. So, um, it's possibly could use a quarterback like Matthew Stafford. So, you, it's a market. So, you know, you look at the league, you want to move Stafford. Then you look at the the, 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 the preferable quarterbacks coming out next year. I know it's a kid like a Utah State or something like that. That's really good. That can be like, can be like a Kaepernick type of guy. Um, but then you look at, you know, Herbert. You look at Tua with the hip injury. And I don't think Tua is in play without Matthew Stafford. And I'll get to that later. Um, um, and, and, and maybe some other quarterbacks I'm forgetting. You know, Jalen Hurts might go somewhere in the third, fourth, fifth round. Um, uh, Joe Burrows, you know, he's showing a lot of improvement. Coach's son, real smart kid. Um, so you look at that, those little class of quarterbacks as well. Um, who drive to, to get rid of Stafford and bring a quarterback in now? Would it be a scenario where the Lions would bring in a veteran quarterback? I doubt it. Would you think about bringing in a Cam Newton, another guy that's dealing with a lot of injuries? I doubt it. Trading for a Gardner Minshew, Minshaw. What you think about it? You got to evaluate him and see if he can do some things. I can tell you this. There's a drastic difference between Matthew Stafford's arm talent and Gardner Minshew's arm talent. But the one thing about Gardner Minshew is that his contract is very team friendly. And if it don't work, you always can just still draft a quarterback, bring Minshew in, and draft a quarterback. So that's my second scenario. Get a more veteran quarterback and still draft a good quarterback. The first scenario was get rid of Stafford and bring in an elite quarterback at the top of the draft and give him the reins to, to the to the car. Now the second scenario is you can bring a, you can go trade for a quarterback like Gardner Minshew, you know, see if he got it, still draft the quarterback and let him let him, you know, fight it out for the position. When you look at Gardner Minshew, the good thing that's working for him in Detroit is he in the dome. So usually guys that don't have elite quarterback arms, they don't really do good outside of domes because they can't make all the throws. You know, you go to the Windy City, you got to cut the ball through the air. You can't play eight games there 
a, a year, probably five or six, four or five, maybe six games, maybe in elements. If you don't have the hand size, you don't have the arm uh, talent, you'd be like Mitchell Trubisky up there. And even everything perfect, he's not that good, you know. So you're looking at that scenario. And whatever other quarterback, you, got, you know, Cam, that might be free. Um, Gardner Minshew out there. Or another quarterback that may become available. You know, I don't think Eli will be fitting here. I think he should just retire, but look at the options, you know. Or then your classic option is this. And this is the option that, that I truly prefer the best. And that is keeping Matthew Stafford, letting him heal up, and you draft a quarterback. You know, I was listening to Mike Valenti. So you got to draft a quarterback in the first round. The numbers show that the quarterbacks outside the first round are not that good. But, hey, it is what it is. Andy Dalton was okay. Kaepernick ended up being okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, Tom Brady, you know, even though that's really an anomaly, that Prescott, it's another anomaly. But um, some good quarterbacks, if you can identify them uh, and give them the proper time. Um, Kyle Allen was like a fifth-round pick, and he did pretty well. He kind of slipped in early, but that's expected. But, you know, it's a scenario where you draft a quarterback, and then um, you keep a veteran quarterback, and you learn behind Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is not going to be there forever. And I think the best scenario is drafting a quarterback, keeping Stafford, and if that quarterback is better than Stafford in the next training camp, then that will be a surprise to me. But eventually, uh, if Stafford go down again, or if, you know, you know, his contract up, and that quarterback is good enough to take over the reins, then that's what you do it. But the way Bob Quinn has been evaluating his talent throughout the draft, um, I, I don't trust Bob Quinn to evaluate a quarterback, and I don't trust Bob Quinn to put the things around the quarterback, uh, a young quarterback. For him to succeed because he hasn't been able to put the things around Matthew Stafford to succeed. Remember, he tried to come in and build the rebuild the offensive line. Taylor Decker, swing, strike one. Rick Wagner, Frazier, swing, strike two. TJ Lane, old as hell, swing, strike three. He out of there already. Them three right there. Graham Glasgow, that's good. Rack now, he doing good. But those three, he out of there. You know what I'm saying? That's not, you know, he picked Kenny Galladay. That was a good pickup. That was very, very underrated. He seen something, but Marvin Jones wasn't his guy. You know, Hawkinson right now, he ain't looking that hot, <laughs> you know, but rookie rookie tight ends, man. Like I said before, Mike Dicka still has the number one um, rookie tight end season statistically, you know, and then that position has changed drastically um, since then, if my memory serves me correctly. Okay, it's changed drastically. Um, you know, you look at the defense. The defense has got progressively worse since Matt Patricia's got here. I mean, um, we lost in Dominican Sue before that. We lost Nick Fairley, which wasn't doing nothing. Went to went to Kyle Vanderbosch, and now uh, Ziggy Ansa is gone, rightfully so. And you know, since Stephen Tulloch, we really can't get that linebacker, that middle linebacker position straight. You know, shits. <laughs> I mean, for a long time, you know, but. Now, you know, Jerry Davis, they give him time and time again. Everybody, including Ray Charles, can see he can't play. Okay? Look at the other linebackers. Uh, 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 Christian Jones and Devin Kennard. Ain't nothing special. There's not one special person on that front line. Unless you want to say Deshaun Hand. And in the way Trey Flowers is trending, he's looking to be special so far this season. When he got healthy. But other, other than the healthy hand and Trey Flowers... You need more than two really good players on two levels of a football team. Now you go to your back end. Walker seems to be like he's going to be on his way to being special. And Darius Slade, they're about to run him out of town, which he's already special. But everybody else in that, Coleman is average, if at best. But a lot of Coleman's uh, woes have been to lack of pass rush. You know? And uh, sometimes your pass rush got to bail your DBs out. And sometimes your DBs got to bail your pass rush out. And I believe... That partnership is uh, not equal. I believe Justin Coleman has built the front seven now more than the front seven has built him out. If they ever built him out this season, to be honest. You know, but this team ain't winning nothing no time soon with Bob Quinn. They're not close at all. And my, you know, my, my personal, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm a Stafford uh, a person in his camp, I'm his agent, I'm his brother, you know, um, your kids, whatever, wife. If I'm them, I would want Matthew Stafford to actually get traded to somewhere where he can have some success and have an opportunity to win. But the Fords over the course since they bought the team, they haven't done that. They didn't do it with Barry. They didn't do it with Calvin. And they're probably not going to do it with Matthew Stafford. 
They want you to stay here and suffer with them. But the right thing to do, if you love Matthew Stafford, would be to trade Stafford um, to a situation where he can get some victories and he could possibly get a Super Bowl run. You see how everybody was so happy for Justin Verlander. He won a Cy Young, what, 18 years later? And every time he wins something, you know, people act like Detroit won something or Verlander won something. Newsflash, Verlander isn't a lion. I mean, he isn't a tiger no more. He's a Houston Astro. But I think Matthew Stafford will get that same reception because I think people are starting to see it. If you didn't see it with Barry, now you've seen it with Calvin. This organization is a clown show. It's a circus run from the top to the bottom. And even if you had a general manager that could succeed, I think it's so toxic up above that you really can't blame Bob Quinn. You know, because he didn't he didn't he didn't have a great environment to be successful. But personally, if you care about the guy and you in this camp, you want him to get traded to somewhere where he can be successful. He can actually get opportunity to win. He got all that he got all the, the stats. I got people calling me from uh Every around the corner, and we talk to Detroit, you know, get to talking about football, just on some small talk stuff. And, you know, oh, Stafford, I didn't know his stats was that good. And, you know, he just ain't won nothing. And he deserved to win something. But from a football standpoint, if I'm the general manager, I'm definitely not putting him in this year. I'm definitely giving him an opportunity to rehab. Even I will give him the first half of camp off. Uh, tell him don't even throw a football or nothing through the offseason. Just work on your body, rehab your back. And, um, you know, you and Daryl Bell will just work on the mental reps. And maybe throw a little bit coming into camp, but I will preserve him halfway through camp. Let him heal up. This is what happened when you don't listen to the medical staff last year. They forced him to play for no apparent reason just to be 6 and 10 when they should have sat him when he got injured. Okay, but now they put themselves in a position where it's affected two seasons. But this season wasn't going nowhere, no way. When they lost to Green Bay in Lambeau and got robbed, I declared the season over with. And it seemed that, you know, technically I, I was right. I didn't want to be right. But the way the way it should go down is they draft a the quarterback very high. Unless you see somebody in the middle rounds um, or second round, then you do that. The only way I don't draft a quarterback high is two scenarios to end this video. The only way I don't draft a quarterback high is two scenarios. Check me out. Two scenarios. A scenario where I have an elite running back there. That's it. If I have a guy like Saquon, Ezekiel Elliott, Todd Gurley, that's the only way. If I have a generational running back talent or a generational, second scenario, pass rusher. Those are two things. If I have a Chase Young, and I don't know the running backs come out this year, but I have a Saquon, a Zeke, a Gurley, a Christian McCaffrey type of special running back this year. Those are the only two ways I pass up on a quarterback. The third scenario, which goes hand-in-hand -hand with them, unless I have somebody I know is going to be there in the second round or the third or fourth round that I really, really like and I believe in, that I know he can develop into a quarterback, that's the scenario I'll take. Because really, if you miss, it, if you miss at a quarterback like the Bears mentioned Trubisky, it ain't all bad because you didn't, it's, a, it's a rookie cap. On, on It's a rookie pay scale for the players now. And thanks to the NFL PA and the players, they allowed the NFL to cap the rookies thinking the money was going to go back to the veterans and the money went back into the franchise pocket. But that's another conversation for another day. And, all, and, all, and also a scenario that come with that, if two will drop to the second round or the end of the first, I would, I would move up or draft them in the second round. That's my scenario. I'm willing to take a chance on Tua with his hip and rebuilding his body up, getting him in the right room, rehabbing his hip for the next two seasons. Because he didn't miss his rookie season. Rehabbing him up and carrying that, I'm carrying him on the roster. Right? Then what I'm doing next season, I'm letting him build himself up again, build his body up, put some weight on to be more durable. And meanwhile, while I'm allowing Tua to develop a man body and get healthy, or get healthy and develop a man body, what I'm also doing is, and if this could be with another quarterback, too, if you take him in the second, third, fourth, or late first, somebody really like to move back into the first round, I'm getting a left tackle. I'm getting a right tackle. You know what? I'm solidifying my left guard. I'm getting a deep threat that I believe in. I'm trying to find a running back that's special. Okay? You can find them anywhere. 
Terrell Davis, sixth round. Philip Rizzi, undrafted. You have a lot of them. Alvin Kamara, third, fourth round. Kareem Hunt, right around there as well. Then I'm building my defense. I'm looking for that pass rusher. And I'm looking for this DB. And I'm, I'm trying to get the defense together. So by the next two seasons, by the time I insert Tua, Tiger Tavova, Tiger Tavova, I don't know how to pronounce that. By the time I insert Tua, I have everything in place. So he ain't got to worry about re-injuring that hip or, or putting the load on his back because two two off seasons or well, three off seasons because I think he gonna miss his first year. The second year I was just you know build with mental reps reps and building his body up in the weight room. His third year I I envision him going. If Matthew Stafford don't get nothing going in the third year, then we move on from him and Tua should be able or the young quarterback should be able to take over. But while we doing that, we just putting assets around the team, we making the team better. So once you plug him in to Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre situation. When Aaron Rodgers came in, they made the playoffs. I think they missed the playoffs and didn't make the playoffs the next year or something like that. But it was a good team. He had to worry about taking that beat. He didn't have to worry about doing too much because the guys on the team was helping him out. So my personal opinion, appreciate everybody for checking in. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out to the email if you got business questions, inquiry, response, share video requests. Share the video. Best way to help the channel out. Want to make a donation? Just share. But that link's in the description. Check on the channel out. Good for the sports TV for more sports, music, entertainment. That's good for the sports TV. Appreciate it one time for the one time. Y'all know what the business is. We gone.